All right, guys, welcome to my channel. This is DIY Mitch's channel. For everybody who's watching my videos right now, thanks for watching. And uh, I went through and did a whole backyard makeover. I'm gonna try to uh, insert some before uh, videos. And so I can show you what it looked like before. And this is the after video. So here we go. I'm walking around the side of the house here. First things first, I power wash the entire screen and porch, including the boards on the outside of the screens. So it looks much better. We didn't want to paint the screen and porch yet um, because I don't think it will look good painted white and the rest of it is wood color on the inside. So we're going to save that for another year. And this here is the new deck. It is all composite decking and as well as the vinyl uh, rails. Uh, everything you see here on this deck is from Home Depot. It is the uh, veranda uh, composite decking boards. So this deck comprises of the 16 foot boards as well as the 12 foot boards. The 16 foot boards have the uh, grooves in them so that you can use the hidden fasteners but I'm going to get into that here in a little bit because I did not use those hidden fasteners that come with the veranda product so um, additionally I have picture framed uh, the entire deck and the reason for picture framing the deck is so you don't have any uh, cut ends of the composite decking you know which is when you cut the end of a composite decking it does not look very uh, pleasing to the eye so you pretty much have to picture frame all of your decking materials so you get a nice finish and I'll show you what I'm talking about the only piece I have on this deck that has an exposed uh, uh, end on it and it's only because it was an afterthought is this right here so this right here is the only exposed end to have on this entire deck because basically all I did was is I took some pieces of composite decking boards that I had left over to hide the gap underneath the screen and porch in the deck. There was a gap about that big in there. So that finishes off that very nicely. So I went with the all vinyl veranda um, rails and um, just uh, for a... a price comparison and to let you guys know how much these railings cost and that's probably the reason why a lot of people do not go to these railings is because each section of railing you see on this deck cost approximately $200 that's right guys so 
by the time you buy the posts, by the time you put the vinyl sleeves over the posts, by the time you buy the eight foot sections of veranda, uh, vinyl railings, top rail, bottom rail, pickets, as well as the hardware. There's hardware on the top, the bottom, on both sides. And then also the trim here and top it off with the uh, uh, LED solar lighting. That's a $200 section. So you can do the math, 200, 200. Those two on the other end over there, and I'll get over there in a minute. That was 200, 200, and 200 on the other side. All right, each decking board, the 16-footer decking boards were approximately, when we first bought them, they were $27 a piece, and we had to buy some more, they were 29. It's getting closer to summer, so I guess they decided to go up. For the 16-footers and the 12-footers were between 19 and $20. All right, with that being said, I'll just go around and kind of show you what we did have to do to the deck. Uh, we did paint the, um, the uh, outer rim joist here if you want to call it we also painted the joist underneath i had to replace several sections of joists underneath the deck that had rottened out and i have videos on that so if you go look at my channel you will see those videos uh in the list of my videos before this one so uh okay let's get around to the pool this pool is a 21 foot round 54 inch high uh, above ground pool obviously um it is an aqua leader uh pandora swimming pool okay let me kind of explain some of that to you so the pandora swimming pools come from they're all made in canada and there's a company called aqua leader there's a couple of other companies and they all merged in this one company and so under several different brand names they sell the pandora i think this is the pandora black or whatever you want to call it above ground pool because obviously it has the dark panels on it the black caps and the dark gray uh tops of the pool there um this pool is 100 percent composite uh the uprights are composite the tops are composite even the wall is composite. So there's no steel, no metal, no nothing that can rust in this pool. All right, this pool is uh, using, uh, we're using a salt water chlorinator. And I, you know, let me just go ahead and get around here. We did some nice little, basically with the extra sand I had left over and we had some, you know, decorative, uh, I don't know what you call it, rocks, whatever. That we had laying around here and we used those to kind of make it look nicer and i'm growing grass here so i've got a bunch of grass seed out you can't it probably you probably can't see it on the camera but it's there hopefully it'll come up i hope it looks better someday but we'll get there so come on around to this side of the pool to show you the mechanicals of the pool on this particular pool i did use my existing uh this is not a hay word it's a hydra tools um this one is a 110 volt uh, I think it's a 1.5 horsepower. I'm not sure where it says. Takes nine amps. Uh, one point. I think so. 1.5 horsepower. So that's all that pump is. That pump's only about two years old. Everything else you see here. Well, the sand filter is also an old sand filter. We have had that sand filter since our first pool. That sand filter is 17 years old. The only thing I've had to replace on the sand filter is the Hayward uh, valve up here. And I replaced that a couple of years ago. So we're all good here. I've replaced the sand in this sand filter one time in 17 years. No kidding. All right, as you can see on my mechanicals here, um, we have the Hayward uh, large mouth skimmer. And um, I have a shutoff valve here. I also do have the thing that goes in here um, I'm not sure what it's called. There's a name for it. You guys can leave me a comment. It's in the house. I don't know what, I don't know what it's called, but you stick it in there for a winterizing and the water don't go down through your pipes. Or I can share it off here. Um, yes, I do have my bonding lug. Don't beat me up. We're going, I'm going to bond the pool. I'm going to bond everything together and ground it. I've got a, I've got a big grounding stake. I've got to pound it to the ground. I'm going to ground it to the ground. So don't, don't, don't get all upset if you don't see a bonding wire here. That, that will happen very soon. I just have not had a chance to do it. 
Okay, so old pump, old sand filter, everything else is new. That is the uh, Aquatrol saltwater chlorinator. Um, that is the um, turbo cell. And then over here, underneath the deck, I've mounted the uh, control box. And guys, let me tell you, this 21 foot ram pool, it's about, I don't know, I think it's in the neighborhood of 12,000 gallons. We did fill this pool with our well. And if you watch my videos, you know I didn't want to do that, but we did, we, it took us, I did not like run water all day long. It took us over a week to fill this pool. I would only leave my well pump running for about an hour and a half. I think one time, two hours at most is all I ran that well over there. So I didn't want to run out of water. And most importantly, I did not want to burn up my well pump. That's another expense I don't need right now. So, um, old sand filter, old pump, new stuff, new stuff, Hayward heat pump. All right, guys, <laughs> I'm gonna tell y'all what, if, if anybody is wondering whether or not a heat pump will be a viable pool heater, I'm just here to tell you, um, if it's over 60 degrees in the environment, if it's over 60 degrees where you live, the most you will get out of this thing, if your pool is around 68, 70 degrees, you might get 80 degrees. That's it. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. However, <laughs> this is a big however. Like today, it's, it's gonna be in the upper 80s. I mean, almost 89. In fact, this whole week, it's been, uh, it's been in the 80s. And this thing right here, let me tell you what, that, it, I can turn this pool pump on and it automatically turns on the heat pump because it's got a pressure switch in there. Um, say eight or nine o'clock in the morning. Pool water starts off at a, one time, one day, earlier this week, it started off at 77 degrees. That was in, you know, eight or nine o'clock in the morning by 5 p.m. after work we were in the pool and it was 90 degrees so yes is a heat pump worth it depending on where you live if you have an 80 degree plus day yes 100 percent a heat pump is worth it with that being said the heat pump will buy you probably depending on where you live now i mean if you live up north if you might as well hang it up it ain't gonna be no good if you live anywhere i'd say virginia you know down south anywhere this thing's going to give you a good i will say it'll give you a good month in the beginning of the season and we're hoping it's going to give us a good month at the end of the season what i mean by that now i was in this pool when it was about 84 83 degrees uh, my wife she's not crazy about it she likes it over 85 but i was in there so depending on who you are you can almost get a month and a half before Memorial Day, you know, in the summertime. So let's see, we are May 1st. I was in the pool two weeks ago. Oh, actually about a week ago, because we just finished about a week ago. Um, I was in the pool, cleaning it up, fixing it, um, and it was around 84 degrees. So depends on who you are, depends on what you want, but yes, is a heat pump worth it? Absolutely. It gives, my, it gives DIY Mitch a stamp of approval. And that is the Hayward 50,000 BTU heat pump and uh it this one will do uh heat and cold so when you know when it's 99 degrees outside in the summertime here in north carolina and it will be trust me it'll be 99 degrees and your water's going to be close to 99 degrees you're going to want to cool it off i mean instead of putting ice cubes in it just turn the thing down to you know say you know 89 degrees and you're good to go all right that about covers mechanicals let's get back to the deck so I already went through $200 a section of rail with everything included. Um, everything is composite. As you can see, I picture frame the steps. Uh, I also put composite boards on the face and uh, I just made sure everything was picture framed nice and neat so you didn't see any cut ends of the board. Again, we painted everything over here. We even painted our... All right, what's up guys? Sorry about that. My phone, my iPhone 
I think this is a, what, a 13, 12, something. It's not a new one. It's a couple years old. It died due to... it. So when I was recording earlier, talking about the deck and everything we've done, it comes up and says, your phone needs to shut down temperature, you know. And so it shut off right in the middle of the video. Man, this technology is crap. <laughs> Even the iPhone's crap. So, like I said, it's, it's warm out here. You know, earlier today it was probably, what did you get up today? 85, 86? Was it 90? 90. So it was 90 degrees a day. All right, so I'm in the pool now. And uh, the water is 92 degrees with the heat pump going. So, yes, the heat pump is definitely uh, worth it. Uh, if you live in, you know, the south. If you live up north, I'm not so sure about it. But it's going to add about a month and a half to your swim time, you know, to your season. And uh, if you got kids that can swim in 80 degree, you know, 75 degree water, there you go. So heat pump's definitely worth it. Um, yeah, so I'm floating around in the pool here. And... Uh, so I just, I guess I want to do the big, you know, price reveal of what this uh, backyard makeover costed. Minus the pool. We're not going to go into the pool unless you guys want me to. But if y'all do, let me some comments. Let me know if you want me to, if you want to go into, uh, you want me to go into what the pool costed. I'm not going to go into that right now. But, uh, you know, as you know, I did it myself. DIY Mitch does his own stuff. So I built everything, installed everything, hooked everything up fabricated everything you know that needed to be done so but yeah so this deck back here all composite all vinyl everything you see including the repairs to the uh you know the floor or the the, the uh, joists someone corrected me on my last video i said rafters or something and they said no that's a you know it's a joist yeah it's a joist anyway i repaired all the you know, rotten damage, and uh, that deck back there, all in all, me and me and Mama just talked about it was on the order of about five thousand dollars. Yeah, and that's what cheap. That's what the cheapest composite decking we could find from Home Depot, the veranda. I hope it lasts. <laughs> Cause I couldn't afford the, I couldn't afford the, uh, Trex stuff, you know, for a deck that big. Um, there's no way that deck would have cost us in excess of $10,000 if we'd have done it in Trex. <laughs> there's just no way. So we're going to see how this veranda Home Depot brand works out. Let me flip y'all around here, see if I can see. Well, actually, I'll just I'll just bring you up here so you can see what's going on. So there's the deck, deck and boards right there. I mean it. It looks good. It's it's not. I mean it's not a uh, Trex quality or anything like that. But I mean it's it's composite decking. I don't think it's as uh, thick as Trex, and I don't think it's as you know nicest trucks but it is composite so we'll see i have to give an update and see how it goes a couple years maybe i'll be in another video i don't know so but yeah that's the deck that's what it costs and that's do it yourself for price that's a lot of i'm gonna tell you what my labor Ooh, and it about killed me i mean i spent a lot of nights in the bed in pain hurting I still do. I mean, just back aches, legs ache, arms ache, because there's a lot of bending over. I'm complaining now, just like every YouTuber complains. But, uh, how you do this? Play the violin? <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. I'm going to wrap this one up. Try to get it edited. I don't know. It might be a couple days before I get it edited, but get it on youtube but yeah that's that's it that's about the size of it but we're enjoying it if you have any questions comments gripes complaints y'all let me know right down below 
you know down here somewhere underneath if you're watching on mobile you got to pull up that you know that comments thing if you're looking on a big computer you got to scroll down and do comments and uh yeah if you're watching on a potato then you you may be shit out of luck so <laughs> but anyway thanks for watching till next time diy mitch is out peace, peace. potato who knows what a potato is y'all know what a potato is oh yeah i forgot to mention one important thing about this new composite decking it's a pain in the ass to keep clean You gotta clean it, <clears throat> especially if you got dogs. You're gonna get paw prints all over it because they're gonna come flying out of the yard. They've been in the woods. Yeah, just keep that in mind if you want composite decking. You're gonna be cleaning it all the time. Later.
Don't leave me here. 